Nanotechnology, making small stuff do big things. Pretty simple definition. Uh, our institute at Rice has a rather small vision. To solve the world's most pressing problems through applications of nanotechnology. So obviously I'm a technical optimist. I'm a technical optimist. I'm a technical optimist. I'm a technical optimist.
one particle, it's got a surface area of about two tenths of a meter squared, not very big. And as you cut that into smaller and smaller particles, when you get down to maybe 25 nanometers diameter, you have 870 quintillion particles, that's one followed by 18 zeros, and the surface area of all those particles combined is equal to about 4,000 basketball courts. That means if you're going to do something like make a very a precise sensor, or you're going to make a, a catalyst that will uh, help us refine oil or something like that, if you nano-size it, you're going to get a lot more power out of doing that. And lastly, there's quantum effects that take place when you get down that side, but we're not even going to talk about quantum mechanics. So, how does this work for curing cancer? Now, my colleague Mauro Ferrari couldn't make it today, so I threw out some of my other slides, and I threw in several slides to talk about how size-dependent properties are going to help us in the, in the nanomedicine field. And I have to say that Rick Smalley had two great visions for nanotechnology before he passed away in 2005. The first was nanomedicine. Unfortunately, we didn't get there fast enough to save him from lymphoma. But the second was nanoenergy, and that's what I'm primarily going to talk about today. But before we get there, I'll tell you a little bit about all the nanoships. So Professor Naomi Hallis, electrical engineer, Professor Jennifer West, bioengineer, about a decade ago came up with the idea of taking a particle of sand that's maybe 40, 50, 60 nanometers in size, coating it with nano gold particles until you get a solid coating. And that gives you a dielectric core and a metal shell. And they discovered as you change the size of that or change the thickness, you can drive the wavelength of absorption or scattering all over the visible into the infrared, shown here for the technical geeks in the audience. And that allows you to actually do something very special. So the infrared is very cool. Uh, this is a, a visible laser. Everybody can see it's green. If I hold it up to my finger, you see the green light doesn't go through my finger. But if I take out a red laser, voila, you can almost see that. You can see that the red goes clear through tissue. And everybody who's ever lit up their hand with a flashlight uh, in a, as a kid in a tent behind the house at night understands that. So if you use an infrared laser that can go maybe three inches deep through tissue, and you have a gold nano shell that is, is designed to exactly absorb that radiation very efficiently, you can actually use it to heat up a cancer cell. So here's the way it works. You got na nano shells absorbing in the IR, you got a target cancer cell here. You can attach a biological marker that specializes in the cancer cell, but it actually works almost as well even if you don't do that. So you then one more, inject it into the bloodstream, it flows through your body. It accumulates in tumors, but anywhere it finds a cancer cell it's going to attach to. You shine an infrared light over the whole body slowly or target the, can the cancer area. It heats it up about 10 degrees C, kills the cancer, and you're done. Very cool. Now the problem is in the animal studies we did, it was a financial nightmare because nobody planned for the animals to survive that long, so it was a, an accountant's, well, okay. So here's what it looks like. Here's the hind section of a mouse. Everybody recognizes that, of course. There are two, there are two breast cancers that have been targeted, that have been planted in the mouse. They're growing here. An infrared laser beam is shining through, heating up only the areas where the cancers are and killing the cancers. So in animal trials, it looked like this. You had the uh, sham group and the control groups here. They all died within a month. The treated groups in every animal study that was done 100% effective in killing the tumors. So we are now in third phase. We're in third phase clinical trials at MD Anderson and in San Antonio for patients with neck cancer and prostate cancer. And as soon as we get through the two years of study of that, if it works as well as the phase two showed, this is going to be a new powerful weapon in the uh, war against cancer. And this, is, this has potential for use in at least 40 different cancers. can even be used deep in the body by putting a catheter in and shining the infrared light inside. So that is a short summary of Mauro Ferrari's talk, except this is only one of maybe 200 different areas that nanotechnology is being used to revolutionize medicine. And in the next decade, you're going to see amazing, amazing new diagnostics and treatments come out of nanotechnology.